Everyone, we know air travel allows us to reach remote and distant locations far faster and easier than would be otherwise possible. It's still statistically one of the safest ways to travel, but that doesn't mean that there aren't some routes that pose a greater risk than others. For various reasons, runways can't always be as long as some planes need. Sometimes runways are surrounded by obstacles or experience weather conditions that make it difficult to land. So please put your tray table up and fasten your seatbelt and join me for today's video. I'm gonna count down the top 15 most dangerous airports in the world. Number 15. Carnivale Airport, Venezuela Named after a famous lawyer and political activist, the Carnavale Airport is around 1.9 miles from the downtown district of the city of Merida in Venezuela. It's built to support the development of the city, and it first opened in 1946 on the outskirts. But within several decades, it was surrounded by buildings on all sides. Add to this the fact that it's in the Chama River Valley and has mountains in every direction, the tallest of which is 16,000 feet above sea level, and it soon becomes clear why this is one of the trickiest approaches and takeoffs of any airport. It was for a long time the main airport in the region, despite having no customs facilities, so only being able to serve domestic flights. But as aircraft designs became larger, the risks posed by the surrounding geography became too great. In 2008, a twin turboprop ATR-42 being operated by Santa Barbara Airlines sadly crashed shortly after takeoff. With 46 people on board at the time, there were no survivors. In response, the airport was closed for five years in order to conduct a comprehensive safety audit. When it was allowed to reopen, the planes could only use a flight path along the river valley and were only allowed to use the landing strip during daylight hours in calm weather. But still, with risks ever present, the long-term plan is to move all flights to another airport and to finally close Carnavale for good. Number 14. Aspen Pitkin County Airport, United States Located around 3.7 miles from central Aspen, the Aspen-Pitkin County Airport is a vital connection for those looking to vacation in the Colorado mountains. It's got a single asphalt runway and a single floor terminal building, but due to its small size, there's a series of restrictions surrounding aircraft operations. Planes have to have a wingspan of less than 95 feet and mustn't weigh any more than 100,000 pounds, which essentially means anything the size of a 737 or larger can't use the airport. Furthermore, because of the mountainous surroundings and the quickly changing weather conditions, flights aren't allowed more than 30 minutes after sunset, until at least 7 a.m. the next morning. And this means the airport is notorious for delays. Even with these restrictions in place, it's still regarded as one of the most dangerous landing strips in the United States, with at least seven serious accidents happening there since 1970. Fortunately, not all of these resulted in fatalities, but the increased level of risk means that pilots are required to have extra certifications to even be allowed to approach the airport. And there's a huge focus on ensuring that anyone operating an aircraft fully understands how quickly the wind speeds around the airfield are likely to change. With Aspen attracting more and more people each year, and around 560,000 passengers passing through the airport annually, huge investment is being put in to hopefully ensure the chance of any future incident is severely reduced. Number 13. Juancho y Yoroskin Airport, Saba Island the Dutch Caribbean island of Saba is one of the smallest inhabited territories in the region and is also where you'll find what's often regarded to be the smallest commercial airport in the world. Amazingly, its only runway is just 1,312 feet long, and it's not only severely limits the type of aircraft that are able to land there, but means that any pilot planning to use the airport needs to have a waiver from the Civil Aviation Authority. Because of its length, there's no type of jet aircraft that's able to land there, and only the smaller types of propeller aircraft or helicopters are able to. On one side of the runway, there are wavering hills, and at both ends, there are treacherous cliffs that plunge down into the ocean. A further unusual element of this airport is that communications from the radio tower are only advisory and it doesn't provide air traffic control services. And fuel isn't available at all for planes, so they need to land there with enough for the return trip. Currently, there's only one flight per day that lands and takes off from the island, and it makes the short 15-minute journey to nearby St. Martin, where there's another dangerous airport, making this journey undoubtedly one of the most frightening you can take by plane anywhere on Earth. Number 12. Courchevel Altaport, France Courchevel has, since the 1940s, been one of the most popular ski resort destinations in the French Alps, and is part of the Les Trois Valleys, which is one of the largest collection of linked ski areas on Earth. 
This valley was part of the 1992 Winter Olympics and was the location for the 2023 Alpine World Ski Championships, so with such a pedigree it's no surprise that it attracts hundreds of thousands of tourists each year. Part of the travel provision for the area is the Courchevel Airport, which first opened in 1962, but it hardly keeps up to typical international standards and is undoubtedly one of the most dangerous in the world. It has a single runway that's extremely short, at just over 1,760 feet, and add further complications, it has an upward slope with a gradient of 18.6%. Because of this, only smaller fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters use it, but there are further complications that increase the risk. The runway doesn't have any lighting aids or instrument approach procedures, so while it may be fine to take off and land there during the day in clear skies, it's virtually impossible and reckless to try and use it when there's fog or low clouds. Furthermore, there's only one route of approach because all the other sides of the landing strip are surrounded by mountains, which means that there's no go-around procedure at all. Once a pilot commits to a landing, they have to touch down as there's simply nowhere else for them to go. Number 11. Paro Airport, Bhutan As the only international airport in Bhutan, which is a country that's fully within the eastern Himalayan mountain range, you might expect Paro Airport to be a well-established and safe place to land. But this couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, only around two dozen pilots are certified to take an aircraft there, and this is purely because of its precarious position and lack of assistance. Built in a valley on the bank of the Parochu River, it's surrounded by peaks that reach an elevation of 18,000 feet. The runway itself is made from asphalt and is 7,431 feet long, which is more than enough to accommodate a range of aircraft. But without the ability to refuel there, planes must be able to arrive with enough to make the return trip, too. Additionally, there's no pilot aids at the airport, which means approaches and departures must be performed under visual meteorological conditions, and are only allowed during daylight hours between sunrise and sunset. As with other mountainous airports, the quick development of storms also means that the runway can be closed at just a moment's notice, and this results in a larger-than-normal number of cancellations and diversions. Number 10. Princess Juliana International Airport, St. Martin Another island that's found the space needed for its airport to present difficulties is St. Martin in the Caribbean. The island is actually split into two, with one half being a French overseas territory and the other half belonging to the Netherlands. The main airport is located on the Dutch side. It's named after the Crown Princess Juliana of the Netherlands, who visited the island in 1944, shortly after the airport's construction. At first, you'd think this airport was no different than any of the others you'd find in the Caribbean, but the thing that makes it stand out is what you find at the end of the runway, a beautiful white sand beach called Maho Beach that's popular with tourists and plane spotters. The proximity of the runway to this beach makes it one of the few places in the world where you can view planes in flight just beyond the end of the runway. In fact, it's so close that it's quite possible for a person to be blown off the beach into the water by the jet blasts produced by the aircraft that fly overhead at altitudes of less than 100 feet. And there have even been several deaths because people have chosen to be too close. Such an unusual setup that this is, the bars and restaurants on the beach actually display flight details for customers so they know when the next plane will be making its approach, and warning signs remind visitors of the potential risks that can be involved by viewing planes so closely. Sadly, now the days of the Boeing 747's landing there are over, with the last one arriving at the island in late 2016, but smaller Airbuses now make the trip and still produce exciting enough flybys for spectators. Number 9. Tiaman Island Airport, Malaysia Tiaman Island is a tropical paradise that's just around 20 miles to the east of mainland Malaysia, and covered with jungle and offering some of the most pristine coral reefs in the region, is the perfect destination for tourists. With several resorts and chalets available, it may come as a surprise, however, to learn that most visitors arrive by boat from the mainland instead of air, and that's because the only airport on the island is severely limited and potentially extremely dangerous. Located next to the island's largest town, the terrain means that the runway can only be used in one direction for both takeoffs and landings, and this means that changes in wind direction can render it virtually unusable for extended periods of time. It's also extremely short, which only small aircraft are able to safely land there, and significantly increases the per-seat cost of traveling there to such an extent that there are currently no regularly scheduled flights that go there. 
It remains a popular way to bring goods to the island, though, and it's most commonly used by private pilots traveling from Singapore and Malaysia. It's perhaps because of their relative inexperience in comparison to commercial pilots that means they're involved in more incidents there. And while fatal accidents are extremely rare, it's not too uncommon to see the wreckage of an aircraft lying next to the runway after a pilot has lost control or gone off the end. Number 8. Gibraltar International Airport One feature you generally expect from an airport runway is a dedicated stretch where planes can take off and land. In another case of space management, though, the International Airport of Gibraltar has one that shares usage with another form of transport. Gibraltar is a small British territory that lies at the bottom of the Iberian Peninsula at the southernmost tip of Spain. It was ceded to Britain in 1713 as an important strategic position overlooking the entrance to the Mediterranean Sea, and it's only 2.6 square miles in size. For comparison, the smallest state in America, Rhode Island, dwarfs Gibraltar at 1,545 square miles. A hilly place that's so small it's got to be economical with its land usage and that's why the runway is bisected by the four-lane Winston Churchill Avenue, the busiest road in Gibraltar and the one that leads to Spain. This causes logistical problems, as you'd expect, with the road having to be closed every time an aircraft takes off or lands. Add to this the tricky crosswinds and mountainous surroundings, and you have one of the most challenging and unusual landings you'll find anywhere. There's a significant benefit to this setup, though. The airport terminal is located a mere 1,500 feet from the center of Gibraltar, making it the shortest commute of any airport in the world, and sure to keep those costly taxi bills to a minimum. Number 7. Williams Field, Antarctica Antarctica, it's the most remote continent on the planet, and while there aren't any large settlements and there's a very limited tourism industry, airports are still needed to serve the various military and research facilities that are located there. The Williams Field is operated in the United States Antarctic Program and located around seven miles from Ross Island, is the main means of access to the U.S.-run McMurdo Research Station that's on the southern tip of the island and the Scott Base that's operated by the New Zealand authorities. As the region is covered in a thick layer of changeable ice and is subjected to constant snowfall and freezing conditions, the two runways aren't made of tarmac. Instead, they're classified as snow-groomed runways, which means tractors are used to maintain a flat surface of compacted snow, which is around 25 feet thick on top of around 10 feet of ice, which itself is floating above 1,800 feet of water. These conditions mean that the airfield is constantly sliding towards the sea, and since it was first constructed, the buildings and runways have had to been relocated three times in order to keep them safely inland, and only planes equipped with skis are able to land there. In a reminder of how dangerous it can truly be, the airport's named after a tractor operator who, in 1956, broke through the underlying layer of ice and drowned in the water below. Number 6. Barra Airport, Scotland Of all the features you commonly see at airports, a sturdy concrete runway would be the thing you'd think was essential. But that's exactly what Barra Airport doesn't have, instead being the only place in the world that requires scheduled flights to land on runways that are marked out on a sandy beach by wooden posts. It's the main airport of Barra, which is an island in the Outer Hebrides that lies to the northwest of mainland Scotland, and it's one of the busiest airports to serve the Scottish islands and highlands, having first been opened in 1936. As you'd expect, only smaller planes fly to this airport, with the Canadian company Viking Air Limited serving the main route between Barra and Glasgow with the 19-seater aircraft. There's good reason for this. The areas set aside for runways are completely submerged during high tide, so flights must be planned accordingly. And the beaches are so popular with cockle pickers, they rely on watching out for the windsock to know if the airport is open. The picturesque scenery around here won the airport the award of Most Scenic in the World in a 2011 poll of pilots and travelers and regularly features in lists of stunning approaches. The real fun here happens during night flights, which are thankfully rare because the runways have to be illuminated by car and truck lights over temporary reflective surfaces. Number 5. Tocantin Airport, Honduras Serving the city of Tegucigalpa, the capital of Honduras, Tocantin Airport is widely regarded by pilots as having one of the trickiest approaches of all major runways in the world, particularly when weather is anything but perfect. 
It's both a civil and military airport, which is around four miles from the city center, but the convenience of this proximity is part of why it's so dangerous. Aerial images show that the runway itself is surrounded by built-up areas, which means one wrong move could be catastrophic with so many people living close by to the airfield. And the region's also surrounded by a mountain range that not only requires quick altitude changes on the approach, but also means that the prevailing winds blow in unpredictable ways. Once you add a storm system to this setup, things become extremely tricky. The runway, too, is unusually short for an international airport, and this means that the largest aircraft to regularly use it is the Boeing 737. And even then, planes are often seen landing on the displaced threshold of the runway, which is something that's forbidden in aviation law. After opening in the 1960s, there have been 11 recorded accidents by planes arriving or departing the airport, and it's for this reason that in late 2021, all international flights were moved to the newly opened Komayagua Airport, which hopefully means that only experienced local pilots will have to attempt the treacherous Takantan Airport in the future. Number 4. Funchal Airport, Madeira when designing an airport, architects face a series of challenges depending on the location, climate, and terrain. But what do you do if there's not enough space on an island to build a runway suitable for larger planes? That's the problem they had on the Portuguese island of Madeira that lies to the west of Morocco and about 250 miles north of the Canary Islands. They needed an airport here because of its remoteness, and the solution that they came up with makes the runway at Funchal one of the most unique and scary in the world. Having started with a short runway, several extensions have been needed over the years to allow modern airplanes to use the airport. The extension in 2000, though, doubled the length of the runway to 1.7 miles, and to do this they had to build it on a platform that reaches out into the ocean and is held up by a series of 180 columns that are approximately 230 feet tall. The particular engineering challenge with this was designing the columns in a way that they could reliably endure the extreme pressures that would be put on them by the aircraft. If the thought of landing on a structure that's seen as one of the most complicated airport designs ever seems unnerving, then you'd be best not to think of the other challenges faced by flights to Funchal. As it's a coastal airport on an island that lies in a remote location within the Atlantic Ocean, crosswinds can become a real problem. It's not unusual to see a plane having to land virtually sideways to counteract it, and a collective sigh of relief by the passengers when they finally come to a stop. Number 3. Lukla Airport, Nepal Anyone who is brave or crazy enough to attempt to climb the summit of Mount Everest will know that there's a very real danger involved in the climb, and they'll often have to walk past the bodies of other climbers that have succumbed to the conditions. The truth is that most dangers begin well before they even take to the slopes, because the airport that's most commonly used to begin the hike to the Mount Everest base camp is undoubtedly one of the most dangerous in the world. The Lukla Airport, which is also known as the Tenzing Hillary Airport, is in the small town of Lukla in Nepal, and because of the short length of the runway and its 11.7% gradient, it can only be used by helicopters or small fixed-wing aircraft that are designed for short takeoff and landings. It's at an altitude of 9,300 feet, and it's just the start of the challenges faced by pilots. The northern end of the runway is surrounded by high-altitude terrain, and the southern end leads to a steep drop, meaning there's no room for error here and very little chance of a go-around if something goes wrong. Furthermore, because of its position, it's subjected to strong winds that often change direction with very little warning. The airport is, for example, frequently closed in the mid-morning because of developing crosswinds or tailwinds, and cloud cover can suddenly develop, which means because of visual flight rules, it has to close straight away. It's estimated that because of this, more than half of planned flights to the airport are cancelled, and even strict rules that only permit experienced pilots to fly to the airfield aren't enough to remove all the danger. The airport opened in 1964, and in a normal year we'll see around 100,000 people pass through it, but in its time there have been 11 serious accidents that caused at least 26 fatalities and countless further injuries. Number 2. Shimla Airport, India the city of Shimla is the capital and largest population center in the northern Indian province of Himachal Pradesh, and it's a simply stunning place to visit. It's built across seven hills that are on the southwestern region of the Himalayan mountain range, and as well as being at altitude, it's a place that often experiences unpredictable weather, and it's considered to be in a high damage risk zone from earthquakes. The city's airport is 14 miles away in a place called Jubarhati, which was chosen because it was the only piece of land suitable for building a runway on, but comes with its own difficulties. 
At an elevation of 5,072 feet, a single daily flight used to be operated by Kingfisher Airlines, but they were restricted to using aircraft that could carry at most 28 passengers at a time. It became increasingly difficult to keep this economically viable, so the service was shut down in 2012 and only reopened again by another airline in 2022. Still, there's just so much danger involved in using the landing strip here because of the weather and surrounding terrain that at most one flight goes there per day along with private helicopters, and most people who need to travel by air will instead choose to travel the 72-mile route road to the larger and safer Chandigarh Airport. Number 1. Cungajas Airport, Brazil Sao Paulo is by far the most populated city in Brazil, and because so many flights go in and out of the city per day, it actually has four commercial airports. One of these, Congajas Airport, is considered to be one of the most dangerous in South America, as the site of Brazil's worst airline accident and, as a result, has a limit of 30 landings or takeoffs per hour. Still, it's the country's second busiest airport, and anyone using it is in for the ride of their lives. When it was first built in the 1930s, there was nothing too unusual about it. Like with most airports, it was built far away from the built-up area of the city to ensure there was enough space. But in the time since, things have changed. Sao Paulo has expanded so much that the airport's now surrounded by buildings, and it almost feels like you're landing on a highway in the middle of a city. One wrong move by a pilot could be devastating, and the developments have meant that it's been impossible to extend the length of the runway to make it suitable for larger and heavier aircraft. With an extra problem of water accumulation on the runway because of a lack of drainage, there's an ever-present risk of skids and failed landings, particularly during stormy weather, and it's hardly a surprise that it's no longer used for international transport and is now mainly a domestic cargo airport. I'll see you next time. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.